Hey everyone, I'm Jason, and this is your commentary on Exodus chapter 2. A man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got married. She became pregnant and had a son by him. She saw that her baby was a fine child, so she hid him for three months. After that, she couldn't hide him any longer, so she got a basket that was made out of the stems of tall grass. She coated it with tar. Then she placed the child in it. She placed the basket in the tall grass that grew along the bank of the Nile River. The child's sister wasn't very far away. She wanted to see what would happen to him. Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile River to take a bath. Her attendants were walking along the bank of the river. She saw the basket in the tall grass, so she sent her female slave to get it. When she opened it, she saw the baby. He was crying. She felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then a sister spoke to Pharaoh's daughter. She asked, Do you want me to go and get one of the Hebrew women? She could nurse the baby for you. Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me. I'll pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses. She said, I pulled him out of the water. Now, in this passage, it seems like there's a lot of coincidences, but we know with God, there is no coincidence, that this is part of his plan. All the other babies were being killed, and yet Moses was hid away until three months of age. Then he was put into a basket in the tall grass where Pharaoh's daughter just so happened to be bathing she also just so happened to hear him cry, to see the basket, to be willing to take him in. Moses' older sister, Miriam, we find out her name later on, she offers to get someone to nurse the baby. So Pharaoh's daughter, Pharaoh, the one who wanted to kill all the babies, is actually going to end up protecting Moses and paying the family as well in order for them to raise Moses when he's still young. Moses grew up. One day he went out to where his own people were. He watched them while they were hard at work. He saw an Egyptian hitting a Hebrew man. The man was one of Moses' own people. Moses looked around and didn't see anyone, so he killed the Egyptian. Then he hid his body in the sand. The next day, Moses went out again. He saw two Hebrew men fighting. He asked the one who had started the fight a question. He said, why are you hitting another Hebrew man? The man said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking about killing me as you killed the Egyptian? And then Moses became afraid. He thought, People must have heard what I did. When Pharaoh heard about what had happened, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses escaped from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian. There he sat down by a well. A priest of Midian had seven daughters. They came to fill the stone tubs with water. They wanted to give water to their father's flock. Some shepherds came along and drove the women away, but Moses got up and helped them. Then he gave water to their flock. The young women returned to their father, Raoul, who also goes by the name of Jethro later. He asked them, Why have you returned so early today? They answered, An Egyptian saved us from the shepherds. He even got water for us and gave it to the flock. Where is he? He asked his daughters. Why did you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. Moses agreed to stay with the man. And the man gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses to be his wife. Zipporah had a son by him. Moses named him Gershom. Moses said, I'm an outsider in a strange land. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The people of Israel groaned because they were slaves. They also cried out to God. Their cry for help went up to him. God heard their groans. He remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites with favor. He was concerned about them. Now, when Moses first fled into Midian, he was already 40 years old. Now He tried to be a leader to the people by killing the Egyptian by trying to reunite the Hebrews, and it backfired. 
even though God will call him to be a great leader, it wasn't the right time. Moses still had to go into the wilderness on his own, find out who he was and who God had called him to be. Not only was God still preparing Moses, God was also still preparing the Israelites because of the promise back in Genesis 15 where they would have to be in slavery for 400 years. At this point, it's 40 years shy. Moses isn't going to return to Egypt until he's 80 years old. Well, that's it for commentary on Exodus chapter 2. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you guys next time.